Hello, my name is Ronnie. What's your name? What? Uh, my name is Ron. What are you? My name is Ronnie. What's going on? Um, I'm going to teach you something today that is very, very important, especially for the ladies. Um, sometimes I know you try and be very cute. Cool. But there comes a point where you have to stop trying to be cute and actually act like a proper woman. Whatever that means. <laughs> It's up to your interpretation. So um, I'm going to teach you about what's called baby talk. So baby talk is what I was just doing to you in the camera. Um, it has to do with your facial expression. Your eyes are bigger, you're smiley. Um, and your intonation, as well as the vocabulary you lose, use. So when it is very, very good and fun and acceptable, to use baby talk is if you are talking to a baby. Yes. Children, <clears throat> not so much. Uh, there comes a point when your precious baby will become a child and you need to actually start to speak to them like a normal person. Not like a dragon, but like a normal person. They grow out of baby talk. Also, I do this. We talk to our pets like they're babies. Oh, doggy want a pony. Oh, hello, kitty cat. What's going on? And the cat's like, yeah, it's great. Dogs and cats probably think we're a little crazy too. And they're like, what? Oh, but I'm cute though. Cool. Uh, give me the bone. Yeah, I'm cute. Give me the bone. So if you're talking to a baby or a young child or a pet, cool. Also, if you're talking to your partner, not in class, but your partner, so your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your husband, your wife, your other boyfriend, okay. You will, I do, use baby talk. This makes us seem cute, awesome. But we don't want to seem cute at a job interview. We don't want to go, hi, I'm Ronnie Wani, how are you today? <laughs> you're not going to get the job and people might think you're a little strange. So, Baby talk is good for three people, three situations. Other than that, don't use it. You probably know some words that are baby talk or the intonation, but maybe there are some words that will surprise you. The number one are one and two, or the top ones are mommy and daddy. So I hear a lot of grown men say, my mommy works in the mall and girls say Ma <clears throat> my daddy gave me a horse okay maybe your daddy did give you a horse but please ladies and gentlemen who are adults mommy and daddy are children's words if a growing man says I love my mommy we're gonna think some strange things are happening with you and your mommy as well ladies if you say my daddy is coming to see me tomorrow night. We're getting the wrong idea of what you're doing with your parents. So, mommy and daddy are only for children. What you're going to say is, do you know? Huh, mom, mom, dad. Good. We shorten this to mom. If you're learning English in the UK, they spell it mom but they spell it with a U. Um, and dad, sorry, daddy becomes dad. This is casually how we talk about our mom and dad. More formal, again, this is baby talk. More formal, we can say mother and father. So it doesn't really matter which one you use, dad or father, mom or mother. Um, just please don't say mommy and daddy. Uh, it makes you sound like you're a little princess or that you have a very strange relationship with your mother and father. Yeah, not too good. So, father is formal and so is mother. 
All right. Um, when I first started the video, I said, my name is Wani. Well, that's not my name. My name is Ronnie. But children have a hard time pronunci pronunciating, like me. They have a hard time saying certain letters. For example, R. Do you have a hard time saying R as well? Cool. See, you're learning. R is very difficult for babies to say, so don't feel bad. They're learning how to get the R out. So instead of saying R, they're going to say W. So you will hear in TV shows when people say, Oh, you're such a widow boy. Widow is a replacement for L in this case, or little. So we would say little, but they say widow. Oh, you're such a widow boy. Um, if you can't say the R, it might sound like riddle, but you say widow. I used to do this. When I was a child, I could not say R. So I said D. I said butter. I called my brother my butter. Now, butter in the pronunciation that you have here sounds like the delicious spread you put on toast and vegetables. So I would say, where's my butter? <laughs> butter is delicious. So maybe I just really wanted butter. My parents got confused. Probably and that's what happened. So you'll also notice that in English pronunciation, in American and Canadian pronunciation at least, um, if it's a T sound, we usually sound it like a D. So uh, in Canada and America, we don't say butter, we say butter. And we don't say little, we say little. That'll be another lesson though, we'll get back to that. So how do we make baby talk? How do we make baby words? We have two ways to do it. Uh, one of them is we double the sounds. So poo is, oh, I'm very good at drawing poo. Uh, maybe we say number two. Um, you can call it also shit in slang. So as an adult, if you wanted to, you could say shit. Some people get mad at that word. You can say number two, or you can say poo. But for children, we double it and we say poo poo. So you will hear maybe parents saying to the baby, do you have to go poo poo? Do you have to, did you make a poo poo in your, and like, the baby's probably like, I just shat myself, mom. Can you change my diapers, please? Also, we have pee pee, okay? Pee pee is urine. So you can say, oh, excuse me, I have to pee. Very slang. I have to use the toilet. Or we say number one. So to make this an adult word, we just take off the second word. One of my favorites, always makes me giggle, is bum bum. I think when I was a kid, my mom said bum bum a lot. I know she said bumbleery, which is even too funny for me to say. Bum bum is the ass. It's your ass. It's, I don't even know another polite way to say it. You can say bum, but for children, we say bum bum. And it's funny. In slang, we say ass. So you could say to someone, hey, nice bum bum. And they, oh, thank you. Okay. Don't be rude. Be cute. Um, then we have a boy part and we have the girl part. So we, for some reason, do not want to tell children that they have a penis. Uh, we call it a wee wee. Mm -hmm. So you might hear someone say, a little boy might say, I went pee pee with my wee wee. And you're like, that's cool, kid. Awesome. I just took a piss. Um, and then the girl part, the vagina, of course we could not tell the children it's a vagina. Some people might call a woo-woo. Woo-hoo. Not too sure where the woo-woo came in, but I've also seen things on the internet where they are called minis, like mini mouse. Very strange things that I've seen on the internet <gasps> about words. For the le I was researching about the lesson about what words we use for children for vaginas, I promise. And I'm making a video about it. Um, we also have this expression. We have expressions that we use. We say, 
Oopsie daisy. Oopsie daisy. So if you have a child and your child falls over or you drop something and you don't want to say shit, people will say, oopsie daisy. As we get older, we just say shit or oops. So if you want to be not as slang as Ronnie is, you can just say oops. Oopsie daisy is very childish. So when we talk about this, we don't want to seem like a child. We want to seem like mature adults. Seem like, yeah. Okay, jammies. Ooh, I like this word. Put on your jammy jammies. Jammies are the baby or the childish word for PJs. Now, you might say, oh, I don't get it, Ronnie. What are PJs? What do you think? PJs, pajamas, <gasps> pajamas. Woohoo! So, the clothes that we wear at nighttime. <laughs> to go to bed, we call them, for children, we call them jammies. In short form, we call them PJs. And the long word is pajamas. When you jump into your Betty Bye with your jammies, you are going to Betty Bye. So, Betty Bye is your bed, or it's bedtime. And the other way that we make words are we simply add a Y to some existing words. So, you've got your jammies on, you're in your Betty Buys, and you need your blankie. Blankie is the child's word for blanket. You might see children with a blankie, um, and it's a security blanket, but they call it blankie or baba sometimes. Depends on the age of the child. Um, Children really like animals, but they can't, I guess they just can't say horse. So they say horsey or doggy. Now we say this sometimes. Uh, we say kitty or they say kitty and they say ducky. So maybe you're someone you know has a rubber ducky. Quack, quack. And there's a song about a duck. It's amazing. Can you quack? Can you quack like a duck? So the way that we make the words cute is we add a Y to them. We usually use it with animals. I don't know why. So, very important to understand that it's okay to use these childish words, but you have to know when to use them. Talking to children, talking to dogs or animals. Hey, look at the doggy. Oh, the dog's like, that's a duck, okay? Um, and if you're speaking to your partner. It's cool. Please be careful. Don't use them in job interviews. Don't use them when you first meet people because you will seem very childish and that's not cool. Okay. Betty bye, Sirvani. Bye-bye.